Hello, everybody. Technical difficulties. This is my first time using StreamYard. And for some reason, the screen is black. But I tested it before. It was also black. But um, it was seemed to have been working on the other side. So let me try. I'm not going to try anything. I'm just going to. I needed to set up another camera and let's see if that actually that actually works. So today we'll be going over my seeds and um, seeing what I need to order. I know watermelons, I definitely used up all the watermelon seeds uh, over the summer. So that's something I'm going to be ordering a lot of. And um, I'm going to be starting seeds earlier than ever, mainly my alliums. So definitely January, coming January, I will be putting leeks and onions in some soil and growing them because they really need a long time, especially here in my zone, zone 6A uh, gardening area. Let's see, let's see if this works. Yep, yep. it looks like, oops. And then you this. Okay. I think that's it, David. All right. I wish this would come down more. Okay, so I've got my secondary screen going. I was going to set it up. Oh, turn it off. Oh, no. Did I end up turning it off? Pushing that button by mistake. Is it back? It's back. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. What is it looking at? Looking, oh, I think I have to rotate the screen. How do you do that? Hmm. Well, I can always do this. Yes. <laughs> I think that's what I'll do. Instead of trying to figure all that out. All right, there's the box of seeds. I just wanted you to have a view of both of us <laughs> while we're going through it, so you're just not looking at my face the whole time. Come on. See, I have this on this tripod. There we go. All right. Get this started. I've also got my notebook so I can write down what seeds I'm going to be ordering. Now, as far as places I order from, and my gardener is definitely top of the list because simply affordability, um, it's free shipping. I don't know how the microphone is coming up on here. If it's an echo or what's going on. Can I mute this stuff? Oh, like quiet. All right, definitely no. Okay, sounds like. I'm not hearing myself anymore, so that should be good. All right, so as far as where I order from, and my gardener, price, 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 and availability, and quick shipment, you can't beat them. Um, I do like to stay local as much as possible. Hudson Valley Seed Co. is great because they do small gardeners and bulk ordering also. 
another one for bulk I really like is true it's a true leaf market they have a nice selection as far as bulk um, like leafy green stuff and then fruition seeds which is up upstate a little bit more they have great selection of regional fairs but I don't care much for their politics so <laughs> so I don't order as much from them but you know you get also get pricier with these other ones so I try to bulk everything I can as much as possible with and my gardener and then if I have to I will choose the best whoever has the best options for me then I'll go out to those other two I done Fedco in the past. I wasn't particularly impressed. It wasn't there in Maine, I believe. I wasn't particularly, you know, swayed one way or the other to order from them in the future. Plus it was still the pandemic time, so shipping was atrocious and all that other stuff. But yeah, I try to stay local. Unless I'm at one of the big box stores, I generally do not pick up anything from Burpee or what's the other brand? Fedco, I think. No, not Fedco. Phil, Fenmore, Fillmore, something like that. That's usually in your Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart's, in their seed, little seed racks. Unless it's like something I've never seen before. I'm not <laughs> going to be apt to pick those up. Or if I'm like out of state, and I'm picking up for somebody else and I'll, I'll obviously pick up something from there. All right. So I haven't really advanced my storage, um, issue here. So, but at least it's all together. Kind of there's it's two, it's in two places, but it's mostly together. I've alphabetized to my desire. And so it should go a little bit smoother today than it has in the past. So let's start with the A's. How many A's do we have? So the amaranth, I have plenty of amaranth. The red leaf and the red garnet. Plus it's self-seeded, plus I saved seeds, so I have no shortage of amaranth in the near future. And then I put these in the A's, or Nope, I just missed. Never mind. That was somehow in the wrong spot. Got arugula. Also plenty of seeds for that. That also self-seeds pretty easily. So I'm not worried about even if I run out of seeds. I just let a few go. They'll seed and I'll collect those seeds. And I might have some seeds already floating around that I didn't. Because I would put them in some other container. So I might not have... Um, have them in these packets. And then I still have a few asparagus, asparagus seeds, because I expected, you know, some of the plants I planted to fail. I've done a lot of transplanting, and I don't know if those are all gonna take. So I do have a few more of this. And from what I understand, these don't last too long, so I really, I need to get this in the ground sooner than later. But I'm gonna winter sow, excuse me, I am going to winter sow Mary Washington asparagus, which is uh, using a one gallon clear ish container, usually like a milk jug or a juice jug, cutting that in half, putting soil about three inches deep, then using the other half that you cut to keep it covered. You might ta have to tape it if you're in a particularly windy situation, but that way it's like a mini greenhouse where you're keeping the moisture in but you're still getting elements coming into the little opening inside but most importantly you're keeping the bugs out and anything that would want to chew on your delicate seedlings and then it's not necessarily faster there's no evidence that it's you'll get faster you know veg vegetation it's just a healthier healthier way to grow and get a head start on growing. All right, on to the bees. There's a lot of bees, mainly because of the beans being so bulky. 
but let's try. I'll try my best on the beans. Oh, speaking of, I do want to make a list, separate list of the stuff I will be growing sooner rather than later, or as far as starting them in January, so I don't forget. Um, all right, so we're in the bees. Let's see where the bees end. Is it? Yep, it is. So the bees are bulky because of the bee. Oh, the bee, leather bee, is bulky because of the bees, which are bulky. I have not had very much success with beans at all, especially this year with the drought and peas. I lump those two together. But, you know, the minute they get a few inches tall, the squirrels, the chipmunks, the mice, I don't know, everybody just comes in and takes them out. So I have not had good luck. I had like one little twist twig of a bean come up and I tried to save seeds. I don't know if those are viable, but I do have some, a few red, let me red. Well, I have red noodle bean, which I really want to grow, but has, I have yet to. And okay, I've grown like five little sprigs that can't eat that. And also cherry key black. And these beans, I just, you would just, I'm saving for the beans itself, not to eat them fresh. But the red noodle, I would really like to like pickle or something. So that, it's not that much of that left. So I will be ordering more red noodle beans. Another one that I really struggled this year is soybeans. I still have enough seeds here. So we're gonna hold off on ordering soybeans. All right, what else we got for the bees? Oh, what happens here? I missed some bees. I feel like I missed a whole bunch of bees. I did. For Pete's sake. Here we go. There's a whole bunch of bees here. All right. Here we go. More beans. Red kidney beans. Another one we have plenty of. Don't need to be reordering. Here's some beans that I saved from the few that came up. So we got plenty of beans. Any other beans while we're here? Let's see. Nope. I think we're good. All right. We have basil. Several different types of basil. We have holy basil. Let's see how much is in there. That's enough. We have Italian large leaf. Plenty. We have sweet basil that came with the green stock that we got over the summer. What else did we get from, must have used that one up. Uh, we got Genovese, plenty of that. We got lime, plenty of that. Dark opal, we don't have that many of. That's okay. We'll try to just save seeds from that, from the little we have. I have Thai basil, good enough. All right, I think that's all the basil. So we have plenty of basil, no need to reorder basil. Beets, we do not have much beets left. Um, uh, yeah, we saved, saved some seeds or did we save this or did we just, no, we bagged some seeds, I don't remember. I don't know what kind these are. So I think we'll have to put in an order of beets because we haven't had much luck with beets either. So we'll probably just go with like the bull's blood or or something similar. I'll read up to see if they've discovered anything new and fabulous about beets. All right, next we have broccoli. We have purple sprouting, plenty of those, and calabrese, plenty of that. That is also a winter sowing type. Now, Brussels sprouts. I got these seeds late last year, so I didn't have, um, I didn't, I might have put a few in the ground, but they didn't come up. So this is going to be an early one. If this takes 85 to 110 days maturity, and they like to mature in the colder weather. So I would have to put this in, let's see, 
four months before your average first fall frost when soil is temperature is at least 40 degrees um i don't know i'll have to read up again on that but i'm gonna start brussels sprouts early early this year all right i think that's all the bees is largely taken over by corn. There's a lot of corn, bulky stuff. Okay. Okay. Let's do the, get the corn out of the way. We have blue hoppy, plenty of that. Can't believe they fit them in this tiny, tiny, <laughs> contain. We have a couple of pink, mini pink popcorn. But I have plenty of um I saved I saved the kernels, so there's plenty left of that. Here's a case where I bought corn for my mom and um it's fairy morse from Home Depot. So I bought her some and I picked extra ones for myself. So there's a time that I bought from that place. I have Nirvana super sweet corn. And corn was another failure, <laughs> but I did get one, one cob and it was delicious. I don't know what it was, but it was so good. It was just like, you know, partially, partially fertilized or not fertilized, partially matured. Like only half the cob was edible. Um, let's see, sparkler by color sweet corn. So I have high hopes for these, for the, for these from these were Fedco. I have high hopes for these. I just gotta get them to grow. All right, that is the corn. I think is that all the corn. Well, I got broom corn, which isn't really edible corn per se. It's like a, like a flower corn. Um, do we have any other flower type? I think that's all the corn. Okay. Then we have carrots. I have a few red atomic, atomic red carrots. I think I'll order more of that because I didn't really get to enjoy that. Um, do we have any Danvers? These are really old. Yeah, we have plenty of Danvers. And then I saved a miscellaneous amount of carrots from a flower. I unknown variety. Mama. Mm -hmm. All right, now we have cucumbers. This is a S, slicing, slicing cucumber that I saved. And then we have some homemade pickle cucumber, some market more, national pickling. Yeah, those are the cucumbers. Then we have plenty of Mexican sour gherkin, and you know, need that much. That plant is ridiculously prolific. But not until the latest, later in the season. At least it was for here because maybe of the drought. But that was amazing at the end of the season, how much, how much fruit came out of that. Um, celery, that's an early one as well. Write that down for January. I have plenty of celery. I've done well. This is for like cooking celery, not, you know, eating vegetable dipping type celery. I have no interest. We don't eat that. And I have no interest in 
growing that and doing all that blanching, blanching um, extra work. I have cilantro. Um, yeah, I, I do well with cilantro. We have enough seeds. Cumin. I thought I grew cumin. It didn't look like cumin. But I'll try again. I still have a few seeds left. Keep trying. Upland cress. It's a great, you know, substitute for salads in the desolate cold winters. If I haven't found it particularly great flavor, I would rather just grow lettuce if I was going to eat a salad. But we have plenty of those seeds. And then German chamomile, lots of those seeds because they're so tiny. So I'm really going to try my best to grow this chamomile this year and then collect seeds so I don't have to keep buying seeds. All right, let me attempt to return these packets back. Oh, hi, Easy Garden <laughs> Triangle, sorry. I'm, I get so engrossed in what I'm doing and I'm not very good at, oh, I'm not very good at this streaming yet, so I didn't notice that you were here. Thank you for coming. Um, cabbage, this is the only cabbage I have. I have not gotten into the whole gap cabbage growing. It takes up a lot of space. We don't really eat that much cabbage except for when I make um, corned beef. No, is it corned beef? It's a big slab of red meat in a vacuum sealed pack with uh, all the chemicals <laughs> and you boil it for hours. Um, but yeah, that's when we eat cabbage. So it's not very often. So big heads of cabbage is not, it's just not something we would grow, at least not now. But pak choy is a cabbage in the cabbage family that we definitely consume regularly. All right, next is the D. D is not too bad. All right, there's not that many Ds. It's probably just one thing. Yep, just one thing, it's dill. We have dill for the Ds. The Mammoth Long Island and the Bouquet, both, I can't tell the difference, you know, what, which is which when I'm eating it, but it's mainly for the, the pickling of the cucumbers. So we have plenty of dill, plus it's probably self-seeding where I left it last year, last, you know, last season. So I probably won't even have to grow them. So they'll just come up on their own, which is how it should be. All right, E is also a short one, just eggplant. This is the Black Beauty because of the drought and because of where I had it planted, it didn't, I didn't get anything. So we'll try it again this year, hoping for a better season, but it might, I might do better with the the Chinese or Japanese ones that are elongated. So I might, I think I will get one of those. Yeah, we'll get an eggplant. Round out the eggplant. There's no Fs, so next is the K. K, K, K. All right, there's not that many in these middle, midly ones, like kale. Where are all my kales? Oh, I know where they are. They're in this box. Or this bag. These were fall projects that didn't get quite the love that they should have gotten. All right, I have arugula in here. Put that in later. Uh, these were not taken care of, put back together properly. Here's another bak choy. I have to put that back. This is the bok choy. Yes, it's also in the, the bok choy is also in the cabbage family. So that's a bok choy. This one is not. Yes, there's the kale. So we have all the kales. We have Bates kale, K 
came free with the green stock. I still have Lacinato dinosaur tail. I have dwarf blue curled and red Ursa, which I had won this from TN Mountain Homestead. So I have plenty of kale. No need to get any more kale. Kohlrabi didn't do well because of the drought, but I still have plenty to try again. So no K. Don't see any need to order any more in the K category. L. All right, L is a no-brainer. It's mostly lettuce. Let's see how many types of lettuce. We have Fruition Summer. I guess these are heat tolerant. I have Ruby Red Leaf, which is a beautiful lettuce, just even to look at. We have Winter Lettuce Mix and Assorted Saved. Pretty much wild now because they just they're in the yard lettuce. Just great. And then I have just an assorted mix called salad bowl mix. Um, it's main, it's, this is mainly for if you're growing microgreens, but it has lettuce in it. That's why I put them in the same here in the same category. Right, I'll just keep it there for now. I'll go through when I decide later. Uh, Lufa didn't do, do this well this year. I still have enough seeds to try. Now here's another bag of miscellaneous lettuce with like collected seeds. Yeah, so that's all the lettuce. Or all the else. <laughs> and we have any ends? No, just one or two. Well, technically, miner's lettuce, should that be an M or an L? <laughs> it's a lettuce, right? Another one that I didn't really care one way or the other. And then this, I put an M for mosh. So these greens are great to just have growing wild if you have that the space, because they're not really, you know, your go-to salads if you're hankering for a salad. Oh, or two O's. Oh, oops, I took the card with me. Put it back. There we go. Oh, we have okra, which I have saved a pod, took seeds. Still have some I didn't plant, a long pod Perkins, plenty there. And another O is the bunching onions. And they say onion is another one that doesn't last too long. But I haven't had too much of a problem with it. So we'll see if it's still good this year. That is our O. All right, P. P is a, P is a bigger batch of seeds. P, P, P. Not that Peas. All right, let's get the parsley out of the way. We have the frilly parsley and the flat leaf. This is still growing, you know. I haven't looked greatly, but I think they'll survive this winter. And there's there's still grow and flower this coming this coming season. Um, but yeah, I have plenty of parsley. Like that. Um, Obviously, P is a big pepper, so let me just get the others. Okay, I got purslane. I got plenty of purslane. I don't have a picture of it in this. But that's another one that grows wild, that should grow wild in your garden for a salad. And then I saved some pumpkin seeds from a store-bought pumpkin. I keep trying to grow these melons. We'll see. 
All right, big peppers. I mean, big pepper varieties here. We have paprika. I think we were successful in growing a plant. So that's exciting. We will definitely be attempting more because now that I've learned a little bit more about fermenting and maybe dehydrating so that you can actually preserve these things for the long term, paprika is definitely one of those spices that we have that we use. Some like it hot pepper mix. I don't know what's in this. It's a mix. <laughs> so that's fun. We got the ancho poblanos. This is always a hit as far as making those pop poppers. <laughs> what do you call them? You know, those poppers. So I have two, two different ones of that. I have jalapeno, which I'm pickling now or fermenting now to make hot sauce. So plenty of seeds. Bell pepper, I still have plenty frozen, but I have enough seeds for that. I saved jalapeno seeds from last year. We have another packet of pepper, I mean pepper, <laughs> rainbow blend bell pepper. All right, that's all the peppers and the only other pea in this package is snowbird peas. The shelling peas, which I prefer versus the snow pea, is in a five, no, in a one pound, you know, container that is in the pantry downstairs. So it's not in this box of little packages of seeds. All right, that's our peas. Let's try to put them back. P, Q, no Qs. <laughs> so R is not too many. Let's see what's in the R. Uh, R. You got rutabaga, my yummy, yummy favorite rutabaga, American, American purple top. I got plenty of that. Radish, which not really sure how I feel about radish. But I have plenty of seeds. I mean, in any other case, in anything else, I should just grow these and feed them to my chickens. So we're not wasting precious food. Um, I have a couple of rhubarb seeds in here. They're a little bit stuck together. They might not be good anymore. Seems like they got wet. So I should plant that. But I do have enough rhubarb plants out there. They They'll probably come back again. This is their third year in the ground. But that's something I would order had I had a great loss. I can just plant that later. All right, S. What do we got for S? S is a big one. Not too big. Oh, uh, yeah. The extras. Spinach is the big S. We have plenty of bloom sale, giant noble, red malabar, which I'm not that crazy about. I find it it's got that mucus mucilinous whatever um, texture and uh, but it's pretty. There's an, I saved some malabar there. Uh, what else we got? That's the spinach. Yep, that's the spinach. And then we have now this. This is a green, a salad that I don't mind. It's got a nice little lemony bite to it. Sorrel. Definitely like sorrel. Oh, bloom stale spinach. I missed that. So we're good on spinach. We have rainbow Swiss chard and five colors. <laughs> Just basically. Same, Swiss chard, all good. Collard green. Collard green is something I've been wanting to grow and I keep forgetting. Because 
I hear charred and I get them confused. Butternut squash. Um, hmm. Seeds look suspect. But we have enough of them. So we'll just hold off on that. We have acorn squash, which I've had a hard time growing also. It didn't come up till like September. And then it wanted to fruit. And it's like, it's a little late, guys. And I have plenty more that I saved from last year. So that is the S's. Yep. Ah, I forgot an M, which is a mustard, which is the tatsoi. It's in the mustard family. Also, plenty of seeds, so no need to reorder my tatsoi. Yeah, put that back later. All right, now, oh, tea, the big old tea. Only one guess what's in that one. Let's see, is there anything that isn't tomato? <laughs> The only thing that isn't technically a tomato is Aunt Molly's ground cherry, which if you want to grow any fruity thing in your garden, that's definitely, definitely a go-to. I love these little has tomato -y things. They're so good. All right, we have saved seeds from the striped German. Um, this is going to be cherry tomato and beefsteak tomato no order i have honey drop um i didn't do a very good like separation of my tomatoes last year so i'm not really sure which is which because some of them had really good flavor but the skin was just a little too thick that it made it something i might not want to grow again but I'll be growing it again this year because I don't know which one that was. Mm. So just coming here, I'll do a better job of naming, keeping track of which of these I liked and deciding from the few there in the future whether to to keep growing them. The gobstopper. This is a tough one because you don't know when it's ripe necessarily because it stays green. And then, you know, you get a little bit of color and that's when it's ripe. But for the most part, the cherry tomatoes, I dehydrate and I use them like on frozen pizza or to thicken up a soup or something. So I'm not really eating it so much, you know, just in salad. Except for, what was that? The, 100, the sweet 100, which is a hybrid. I grew, I grew that like two years ago when it comes back on its own. But since it's a hybrid, it's, you know, it's not true the second year and on. So I don't know if it's a mother or father plant that I have now, but it is fantastic. The skin is, is thin, the juice is there, the sweetness is there, the flavor. So I'd recommend Super Sweet 100 and then letting it reseed or saving seeds from that. Um, Sun Gold, definitely recommend Sun Gold. Everybody recommends Sun Gold. Uh, it seems like, let's see, do we have any more seeds for sun gold? I have five. Five seeds left. I think I'll order some of that. Sun gold. Tomatoes. Paul Robeson, I liked. And Ruby German Green. I grow because of fried green tomatoes. That's basically the only reason I grow it. And feels, there's a few left in there, enough. Margaret's tomato, I grew to make sauce. Black crim was fantastic. Let's see. Hmm, not too many of that left. Black cream. Mm -hmm. Let me go back to oh. Rutgers. Mm -hmm. So if these are things 
tomatoes that you're preserving definitely need to grow a few plants. Uh, Paul Robinson, how are you doing on that? If you weren't here last year, um, I had a plant sale. So a lot of these were not necessarily sold, but I grew them. So that's why there's not that many here. But I'm very conservative with growing seeds. I'm not just to throw everything in and see what pops up because germination is, you know, pretty much 90%. So I don't like to waste seeds per se, especially since they last a couple of years. Um, the opalca tomato I grew because it's a paste tomato for sauces. They did well. They they were abundant. San Marzano was very much a winner. Tomatoes didn't handle tomatoes handled the drought well this year because the um, the flavors were just more concentrated. Yeah, um, San Marzano sounds like I need more of that. What did I say with the other one? Black friends? Did I put that on the list? Yes. Opalka. And I'm always willing to try, as far as like paste tomatoes, I'm willing to try different kinds. I'm not stuck on any really. Um, tomatillo. I have this, but we don't really, I don't do salsa really. We don't really eat salsa that much. And I have plenty of seeds and they self-seed just fine on their own. I'm never going to have to plant a tomatillo <laughs> forever. So no need for that. Honey drop. Honey drop is a good one. I think anything that has the word honey in it is a good, is a good bet. I think you're worried with tomatoes is you know, disease resistance, pest resistance. Those are the things I would look out for. Okay, I have a secondary container. All right, this is the Dr. White Cheese Yellow. I just ordered this, I thought. I did a late or early fall or late fall order of some seeds. Yes, yeah. so this. So I did order some of these things already. I'll have to go through this tomato again and see what is what. But I haven't grown this Dr. White Cheese yet. And the brandy one, which is another popular one, I haven't grown yet. And the cherry key purple, another popular one, I have not grown yet. So those were ordered at the end of the season last this year. All right, those are the tomatoes. That I will have to go back through to figure out what needs to be reordered. All right, not too many much left. We got W's. Any guesses on what the W's are? Here's some saved corn from another time. All right. All right, I got my sugar baby watermelon. So plenty of that. What's this one? That's a melon, a, hun a cantaloupe for me. The uh, honey rock. Plenty of that. Laura the Giant, enough of that. Moon and Stars is empty. So, let's write that down. And there's a few August Ambrosia. Another bunch of melons, cantaloupes is the Gris de Ren and Haley's Best Jumbo. We've got Crimson Sweet, Siberian, Sweet Siberian. 
Oh, here's my moon and stars I saved. The new watermelon this year, or two, is the mini Minnesota mini. And I'm sure there's another small one, like a personal watermelon that I want to try. I just, the name escapes me. Yes. Chocolate face. Mm. All right, that is all the WS. But since it takes so long to grow watermelons, I mean, not really, but it does. I'm going to try to stick to the smaller varieties. Let's see if I can get a successful watermelon this year. Now, I don't know if you remember, but my first year growing watermelons was pretty good. I got a few watermelons that we got to eat. This year was not that year. All right, what is left? Um, let's see what's in the box. These, nope, not empty. These are empty. All right, in the miscellaneous category, we have the Oriental Yard Long Bean. I will reorder that. And onions. I'm all out of onions. Definitely ordering onion seeds. I like these little ruby reds. And all I harvested this year were little cocktail sized onions. But I did leave, I forgot about them. I left some in the ground. So they might come back bigger and better next year. All right, these are all sunflowers. I think we did really well with our sunflowers this year. Love clean, chocolate cherry. This just says tall. Autumn beauty. We're out of lemon queen and we're out of black Russian. I do want to order um, eating sunflowers for people as well as the chickens, which that's silly because the chickens will eat anything, but specifically the black or black something. I'll have to see what the package says the chickens eat specifically as far as sunflowers. This miscellaneous box holds. What? Oh, these I believe are all the spent spent containers that I save in case I want to go back and and um, reorder. But I also have some saved things in here like this is spicy peppers, mini bell shape because I've forgotten what they were called. So those were cute. I'm going to grow that again. In this one we have, ah, the pineapple tomato. This is fantastic. I cannot recommend it enough. It was gigantic and it was juicy and it kept growing through the fall. Um, this is a cucumber. What kind of cucumber does it say? Mm, I can't read that. What's that say? No, that's the date. So these are cucumber seeds of unknown origin. <laughs> but I've saved that. So yeah, these are all the empty packets that I save. So if I want to go through and see if I've already grown something or forgot what I have grown, I can just go in here and there's a packet of Rutgers seeds, tomatoes, in there for some reason. All right, so that is the empty pile. And the last, last batch of seeds in my box are flower seeds. I'm not, I like the flowers. They are fun to grow. I recommend everybody grow them for the pollinators, if nothing else. So we have calendula, which is a great medicinal. Not to be confused with marigold, which has its own purpose, but not the same as calendula. We got more amaranth. 
We got the Nicotiana Indian Peace Pipe. These are great for hummingbirds. Delphinium. Foxglove. Cosmos. Those come back. I mean, most of these come back if you let them. Like um, Cosmos came back by itself, but I just add on. Forage comes back by itself. No problemo. Yarrow, I still have growing and that will keep growing as long as it wants, because I have seeds. More marigold. Oh, as far as marigold, I want to make sure I get the dwarf, the dwarf variety. Because I grew that for my mother-in-law and her space it's not that big and I don't want her to be fighting with the gigantic marigold that grew this year. I got snapdragons. Yep. I think this was still, this was a big bushy thing. The Cracker Jack mix. I got white, white cypress vine. Scabiosa. Those did not grow very, they grew, but they didn't grow great. So we'll see how that goes this year. Nasturtium, I got different. This is the Cherry Rose Jewel, another jewel mix, all the colors. Um, the flowers, the leaves are edible. The seeds are like said to be like capers if you wanna go using that. Johnny Jump Ups, which I didn't know, but I already have growing wild <laughs> on the property. So I'm just adding to that. Um, night scented stock. Haven't grown this yet. Sweet peas. This is currently growing. The lavender. It hasn't died yet from the cold. So I'm excited and we'll be planting more English tall and Munstead. And here's a couple more sunfl sunflowers. Sun gold tall. Mammoth is one of those that are edible. And the snacker, edible. <laughs> and that's empty. Okay. So that's all the flowers. Now, why do I have those other S's over there? I think I'm going to have to go back through and readjust. All right. Well, we have gone through our seed box. Oh, this is kombucha. I made it. That wasn't too bad. An hour of going through seeds, getting my list together. Um, yeah, this shouldn't be too bad in order. Assuming they're all in the same place. But yeah, for January, I'm going to be putting in onions, celery, and Brussels sprouts. And then um, February, I'll start with the, what do you call them? Brassicas, <laughs> kales, uh, Swiss chard, collard green, broccoli. I can get them in the ground sooner than I have in the past. So I'm going to take advantage of that this year and learn from others and my own mistake. Get that in. Um, yeah, but otherwise, that's all the seeds for today. I will, obviously, you'll see me again soon, come the new year. And then we'll be starting to grow again. Very exciting. All right, well, I wish you all a happy new year. Hope it's a warmer new year. It looks like it's, it's going to be on the warm side. It might be wet, though. So keep your festivities to a safe minimum. Don't get sick. I've been over the sick. I hope it doesn't come back. <laughs> uh, being sick sucks. Because the older you get, the longer the sick remains. So stay healthy, everybody. Thank you for catching this live or watching the replay. Hope you subscribe. Join me for 2023 growing season and beyond. And I will talk to you all again soon. Bye.